Being a woman who suffers from hair loss or alopecia, no matter which type of alopecia you suffer from, sucks. Let's just put it right out there, it sucks. Today, I wanna to teach you how to cover up your alopecia, not because there is anything wrong with it, not because you are not beautiful with it, but just because sometimes it can make us feel a little bit more comfortable to do so. If that sounds good to you, then keep on watching. If you are new here, then welcome. My name is Gabby and I've had traction alopecia for the last 10 years. I recently made a video about my traction alopecia and I put it on YouTube and it just completely blew up. And since then, it's been quite a whirlwind of an experience for me. I've been getting hundreds and hundreds of messages from women all over the world, both on Instagram and on the comment section of the video, telling me about their alopecia, telling me about how they've experienced it, how they've dealt with it, how it's affected their self-esteem. And so I sat with that information for a little bit and it started to weigh heavy on my heart because I knew there was a lot more than just what I had explained in that first video about my traction alopecia. So I made a follow-up video just really telling you guys the real reasons I got alopecia in the first place. If you are interested in why alopecia happens, why alopecia happened for me, and maybe why alopecia could potentially be happening for you, then you can check out those two videos when this one is done. Regardless of all of that, I wanna tell you what I use to cover up my alopecia so that I just feel a little bit better during the day. I have tried everything. I've tried everything. I've tried topics. I have tried a fiber spray that almost looked like a spray can. It was a disaster. Got on everything. I have tried powders. I've tried like little compacty powders from lots of different brands. Those work really well. But time and time again, I always come to the one thing that I didn't need to buy and spend money on that I already have at home and that you already have at home. And that is a matte shadow and a densely packed brush. I'm gonna teach you how to cover it up with those products that you already have right now. Here is my alopecia in the before. As you can see, my alopecia is bad on both sides, but it is predominantly worse on my right side. All right, so this is what you're gonna do. You are going to find a matte shadow in an existing eyeshadow palette that you already have. I'm gonna use my Pure Cosmetic Crystal Clear palette because I find that I get a lot of selection of natural shades. This is what I do when I am working with brides or mother of the brides that have some thinning in the hairline when we're doing updos. If you have really dark brown hair, you're going to choose a very matte dark brown shadow. My hair is dark brown, like balayaged, but my roots are really, really dark. They're almost more towards a soft black than a dark brown. So what I like to do is I like to use my black shadow, but I dip from my black shadow into the brown, into the black, and I custom create a really dark, you know, almost black, but not completely black color. If you are in between shades, I recommend that you do that. If you are blonde, you want to use a taupey color. So you want to go into like this range here and use something that is more on the taupey side and that will cover it as well. Now the key to this technique is using a brush that has really super dense bristles. Now the brush that I am using is by Artiste and it's the Elite Oval 6 brush. The Artiste brushes are absolutely amazing but we have to be honest in that they are a fortune. They're so expensive, it's unreal. So you can find brushes that are shaped like this on even like AliExpress or Amazon for significantly less money. So you don't have to go all bougie and get a super expensive brush. All that really matters is that the bristles are very tightly packed. The more packed the bristles, the more pigment you're depositing. And in this case, you need to deposit a lot of pigment. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip into my black pigment dip into my dark pigment, dip back into my black pigment, create that custom color, and then I am buffing it into that scalp area. Essentially, all that I'm doing is I'm shading in the scalp so that it doesn't look white. If it doesn't look white, you can't tell that the hair is missing.
Now when I get to my hairline, I want to make sure that I'm not creating too much of a harsh line. So I like to kind of use most of my products in the back zone. And when I don't have a lot of product left on my brush, I just like sweep it through the hairline in like really soft strokes to kind of disperse it evenly and not create like too hard of a line. That's going to be like a dead giveaway. Now let's go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. There you go, it's gone. Yay. Let's take a look at our after. See, and just like that, using something that you already have, you can cover up that alopecia in a way that's so believable that no one will ever know you had it. I've had alopecia for 10 years. I often wear my hair half up or in ponytails. Don't worry, I don't do them too tight. But my clients and, and my friends had no idea that I even had it because I just cover it up with eyeshadow and call it a day and move along with my life. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you supporting the channel. If you are interested in this video, then you might be interested in this video next. As always, I love you. I'll see you next week.